Do the Iowa Hawkeyes have a secret weapon against the Ohio State Buckeyes this weekend? I think they might. The Ducks and the Spartans go at it here on Friday night under the lights. I find Rutgers and Nebraska very intriguing. And oh, yeah, Michigan and Washington, a rematch of the national championship. It's a huge weekend for Big Ten football and college football right here. It starts now on Locked On Big Ten. You are Locked On Big Ten, your daily podcast on the Big Ten Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Big Ten. I'm Craig Scheman, coming up on 40 years as a sports talk show host and play-by-play announcer. And I want to thank you for making us your first listen each and every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. And on YouTube, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets. Guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com and get started. We got every team, every game in the Big Ten. It's a huge schedule. It's a lot to keep track of. It's why we love doing this podcast. Week six is going to be big. Plus, Bacon and Ohio State. Yeah, you're going to want to hang around for that. Plus, we have our pigskin picks as well. Quick programming note, Locked Out Big Ten is going to go live in, as soon as the uh, the Washington-Michigan game is over with. Live on YouTube right here on Locked On Big Ten. Immediate reaction, your comments, everything. We'll talk more about that in a minute. But first, Kirk Ferentz and the Iowa Hawkeyes. They got a big test when they go into Columbus on Saturday to face what seems like an unstoppable Ohio State football team. That game airs at 3.30 Eastern on CBS. So can the Hawkeyes win this game? Probably not. Probably, I mean, Ohio State's just that good. But it might not matter. Every game on the Hawkeyes' schedule moving forward is winnable. More on that in a minute. So can the Hawkeyes make this interesting? Yes, they can. For many reasons, let's get into it. First of all, they may have a secret weapon here. If you saw yesterday's Locked On Big Ten podcast, you may have caught a hint where I'm coming from. By the way, if you did miss it, go back and check it out. You can go back and watch all of our podcasts on TalkBig10.com. We post them all there as soon as we're done. But the secret weapon could be much maligned Iowa Hawkeye quarterback Cade McNamara. What am I talking about? What are you talking about? He struggles to throw like for 100 yards a game. That's all true. But he's the only Big Ten quarterback that has ever beat Ohio State. That's right. Think about it for a minute. Back in 2021, he was the starting quarterback in Michigan. This is before J.J. McCarthy, and he beat the Buckeyes 42-27 that year, and he started the three-year headache versus Michigan that Ryan Day has faced much to his chagrin. For three straight years, the Wolverines beat the Buckeyes, won the Big Ten, went to the playoffs, and they eventually won the national championship this past year. Cade McNamara had moved on to Iowa by that point, by the time of the national championship, but it was a young McNamara that started all of this back in the day. So I decided to go back. I went back and looked at the stats. I'm sure some of you are probably doing it too for that game because you can't believe a Cade McNamara beat uh, beat Ohio State. It would, it would have taken a monumental effort to do so, right? Well, I mean, I, we admit he's not a great passer right now, and he does not have the same kind of weapons to throw to at Iowa that maybe he did at Michigan. Back in that 2021 game, though, he wasn't particularly spectacular either. He was only 13 of 19 for 159 yards. He did throw an interception, no touchdowns in that game. Kind of sounds like a Cade McNamara game, to be honest with you. By the way, on the other side, C.J. Stroud. Yeah, that C.J. Stroud with the Houston Texans threw for 394 yards and two touchdowns in the loss. That Buckeyes team also had three future NFL wide receivers in the lineup that day in Jackson Smith and Jigba, Garrett Wilson, and Chris Olavi. That was a lineup. Granted, that Michigan team was more talented than McNamara's current Iowa Hawkeyes team, but Michigan and Iowa do have some similar philosophies. They like to run the ball, and they like to play defense. And the 2024 Hawkeyes, they have a very good defense, and they got a great running back in Caleb Johnson. This season, Johnson is averaging over eight yards a carry. Two weeks ago, he lit up Minnesota for 206 yards. He's got 685 yards and nine touchdowns so far. It's something that Ohio State's going to have to take seriously. And I know, I know Ohio State has 
awesome running backs too, plural of their own. No question. I'm just saying, I think there's enough here for Iowa to muck this game up just a little bit. And if this game gets off to a slow start, and if an untested Ohio State team is looking ahead to next week's massive showdown against Oregon, this game could be interesting for a while. All right, we'll leave it at that. Speaking of schedules, let me finish what I started earlier when I was talking about the Hawkeyes schedule. After this Ohio State game this weekend, they host Washington. They play at Michigan State. They host Northwestern and Wisconsin. Uh, then there's a game at UCLA and Maryland for the regular season finale against Nebraska. All of those games are winnable. The toughest remaining game on that schedule will be the Nebraska game at the end of the schedule. All of these are winnable games. No Michigan, no Penn State, no Oregon. Win or lose on Saturday, just like we stressed in the summertime when we were doing Big Ten previews of all the Big Ten teams here on Locked On Big Ten. Uh, we suggested back then that Kirk Ferentz and the Iowa Hawkeyes can put up a big win total this year at the end of the year. They're going to win a lot of football games. So we'll see how they do against Ohio State here this weekend. Meanwhile, elsewhere around the Big Ten, things get kicked off tonight, Friday night, Friday night lights, uh, 9 o'clock Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific as Michigan State travels to Autzen Stadium to take on the Oregon Ducks. In case you missed it, Lockdown Big Ten did a complete preview on this game in yesterday's podcast. So you can check that out either on YouTube or go back to our website, talkbig10.com, and check it out for yourself. I highly encourage you to do so. And just like Ohio State, the Ducks want to make sure that they're focused on not looking ahead to next week's game against Ohio State. It's going to be a big temptation for both teams. There's no question. And Michigan State first-year head coach Jonathan Smith his quarterback, Aiden Childs, and his tight end, Jack Belling, all arrived this year via Oregon State. I think they still have a little Oregon rivalry in their blood for this game. Meanwhile, enjoy the Dylan Gabriel show as he's completing over 80% of his passes. And look out for his favorite target, wide receiver and punt returner, Tez Johnson. Yeah, he's a double threat. Absolutely. Speaking of primetime, tomorrow, Saturday night on NBC's Big Ten Saturday night. We got a rematch of the national championship as Michigan travels to Washington under the lights. And there have been a lot of changes on both sides since they met back in January. We did a complete preview of this game uh, this uh, earlier this week on Locked On Big Ten. Again, go check it out on YouTube or on our website, talkbig10.com. We did a lot of previewing this week. This is what we do. If you're new to us, go back and check it out. Always invite you to go check out a second listen. And again, one more reminder, we will go live after this Michigan game at Wisconsin, or Washington as soon as it is over with. Probably going to be about 11 p.m.-ish Eastern, 8 p.m. Pacific. We'll go live here on our Lockdown Big Ten YouTube channel. Immediate reaction from me, immediate reaction from you and your comments. We'll put it all together, not just that game, but all the other games of the Big Ten throughout the day. We do this on the weekends. It's a great success to you guys, and uh, we always have fun doing it. As soon as the final whistle goes. We're going to go live. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't yet and share and follow and like Locked on Big Ten. We always ask you to do that. It's free. And then we're in the same Big Ten loop each and every day because we're coming every day with new material right here. Your home source for all things Big Ten here on Locked on Big Ten. You subscribe. That way you'll get the latest episode of this podcast as soon as it becomes available each and every day. We have a video and an audio version, by the way, that come out at 6 o'clock Eastern each weekday. All right, lots to do. We still have five more Big Ten games to touch on here. Plus, what does Bacon have to do with Ohio State football games? You're going to want to hang around that, and then I have a question for you coming out after that. And then we'll have our pigskin picks as well for the weekend. Some interesting point spreads. We'll see what we do with your favorite team. It's all coming up in one minute right here on Locked On Big Ten. FanDuel makes the fun of watching sports even more fun. I encourage you to jump on this, especially if you're an NFL fan. You can start this season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So when you get a hunch in the middle of a game, uh, you want to check out the latest stats while it's going on, view live play-by-play, -play, and so much more like that right there on the same page that you place your bets on your favorite games and your favorite teams. All right there. 
uh, and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com. Don't forget, Sunday, speaking of NFL, we got our first game in London this year. The Jets are at the Vikings. Vikings minus three, but those games are always kind of hard to predict. You never know how a team's going to react to being overseas. Uh, and we'll let you know what our thoughts are on the Michigan State-Oregon game. Big point spread there that's coming up in our pigskin picks in just a little bit. Once again, this is all. Find it on FanDuel, fanduel.com. All right, let's um, uh, get into a few things. We've got some other games we want to get to. But first, I want to thank you for making Lockdown Big Ten your first listen every day, especially you everydayers out there. Meanwhile, be sure to subscribe, share, follow, and like. Lockdown Big Ten really helps us out a lot, and it's free, absolute forever, forever free. Lockdown Big Ten, your team every day. And don't forget our website, talkbigten.com, where all of our podcasts and your favorite team's merchandise is right there. All right, let's pick at a few games here. We got UCLA at Penn State. No whiteout energy for this one. Um, still plenty of attention on Penn State as they're coming off, though, their best defensive effort of the game last weekend under the lights against Illinois, a very good ranked Illinois team. Illinois marched down the first opening drive, got a touchdown, and that was it. It was operation shutdown. This Penn State defense started to look elite like it did last year. So this week, the UCLA game, that is uh, the big noon game on Fox, uh, game of the week, and uh, do some math. This is UCLA coming from the West Coast for a noon game on the East. This is 9 a.m. for them. I'm going to be real interested to see how they react and play in this game. It's going to be a morning game for them. Um, meanwhile, uh, the Nittany Lions, I want to make sure they don't have a letdown coming off such a big, big game last week against Illinois. And um, we'll see. I and mean, UCLA is struggling too. So uh, we'll see how this, if it starts, this game starts out flat for both sides or Penn State's able to continue what they were doing. They do need to fix their field goal situation. It's a field goal problem. James Franklin says his team does not have a kicking game problem. He was very specific about that. He says his punt unit and his kickoff team is fine. Problems just with field goals. They are just one of four from field goals in the 40 to 49 range, 49-yard range. They need to get that short up. Speaking of one and four, that's actually Penn State's record against UCLA in their last five matchups. So look out there. Something else to look at, UCLA, uh, that will, will hurt. Ethan Garber's their quarterback. He left the Oregon game. He was injured. And he has told the staff, he says, there's no way I'm missing the Penn State game. No way. Just a case Deshaun Foster has been giving backup uh, Justin Martin some snaps this week. But we'll see if the regular starter, Ethan Garber's, answers the bell for UCLA on this one. All right, another very intriguing game in the Big Ten. Southern Cal, USC. Trojans going into Minnesota to take on the Gophers. That's a 730 game on the Big Ten Network, by the way. Here's my stat of the week. You ready? Both these teams have played at Michigan in the last two weeks. Both teams lost there by three points. Might this game be a little closer than people think? They more a little more evenly matched than people think? USC quarterback Miller Moss got a bunch of great wide receivers, but Minnesota has some talent in the secondary and the Gophers running back and Darius Taylor. He's going to be tough for the Trojans to stop. I think this is a close game. I'll give you a better clue when we get into the pigskin picks in a minute. Meanwhile, the Indiana Hoosiers looking to go 6-0 and if they can win on the road at Northwestern. That's 3.30 on the Big Ten Network. Kurt Signetti's Hoosiers, they're for real. They're, for, they're, in the, they're ranked 23rd in the country, their top 25 team, and there's a reason for it. They're explosive. I mean, they had four turnovers against Maryland. And usually if you have four turnovers, 99% of the time you lose. They won in a blowout. They overcame it. They move the football. They play defense. It's a really good football team. And their top opponent this week might be themselves. You know, with those four turnovers aside, going into Northwestern, you know, look, it's it's human nature. Sometimes you go, oh, it's just Northwestern. We got this, right? You go there, you go into their tiny little makeshift stadium over there on campus, which I think is great, by the way, right on the shores of Lake Michigan. 
And you might think, all right, we'll go in here. We'll do our thing. We'll come out with our sixth win. We'll move on. And you got that attitude. You're going to, you lose those games. You lose those games. But I don't think Kurt Signetti is the type of coach that's going to let his team go in there and be complacent. So uh, the Hoosiers at Northwestern trying to go 6-0. and Here's another fun game. Rutgers at Nebraska. This is 4 o'clock on FS1 Eastern time. And we got a great deal of interest in this one. Uh, I think there's a couple of similarities with these teams defensively and their toughness and a little bit of grittiness with both of these programs. One advantage that the Huskers will have will be freshman sensation quarterback Dylan Rayola. Rutgers head coach Greg Schiano spoke about him this week. He's noticed him. He's noticed him watching the old game film, getting ready for this game. He said Rayola's command of the offense is unheard of even for anybody, let alone a freshman. A lot of high praise here. It's all true. Rayola's the real deal. If you haven't seen him play, you should check this game out. Uh, meanwhile, Rutgers is coming off a big win at home last week when they held off the Washington Huskies. Huskies missed a 55-yard field goal to tie it at the horn. Nebraska's main concern will be shutting down the Scarlet Knights' running game led by 2023 Big Ten rushing championship champion Kyle Manungai. Great running back, great running game for Rutgers. And what, keep a tally of the Nebraska penalties. This has been the one problem that they can't take at too many penalties. If they have a lot, they could be this could be a tighter game. Meanwhile, uh, Purdue at Wisconsin, noon, Big Ten Network. It's a tough game. Both of these teams, they need to win badly. Badgers are trying to get back on track. They've lost a couple in a row. Luke Fickle's regime the second year here. Uh, they got pummeled by Alabama, which, look, Alabama's Alabama. They lost Tyler Van Dyke in that game, and he's gone for the year. Braden Locke is now the starting quarterback, which I, you know I like him. Um, I even made an argument in the spring and the summer that maybe he should have been the starter there. So he's got some experience because he started last year when uh, Tanner Mordecai got hurt, got a handful of starts, but he played last week and he started and Wisconsin took a double figure lead into the locker room at Southern Cal. And they, um, in fact, uh, the Trojans fans were booing USC going into the locker room. Eventually they lost that lead. They lost the game. So um, the Badgers need a win to get this thing turned around and start feeling good about themselves. It'll be good for them to be home for this game. Meanwhile, the Boilermakers, they're going nowhere fast. Ryan Walters also in his second year. A couple of weeks ago, they got embarrassed by Notre Dame in front of their own home crowd, 66-7. to They lost at Oregon State. They lost to Nebraska last week in a game in which nobody scored in the first half. I mean, Purdue did eke out a 3 nothing lead before Nebraska reeled off 28 straight points. It was a weird game. In fact, they, uh, they fired, Purdue fired their offensive coordinator right after the game. High-priced guy that they liked. Still owe him a million bucks next year. It's crazy. Um, and to make matters worse, have you, Purdue fan, have you looked at your schedule? Your, the next four of your, the four of your next five games are absolutely brutal. All against ranked teams. You got Illinois, you got Oregon, you got Ohio State, you got Penn State. That's tough. Uh, things look like they could get – again, Purdue needs a win this week. I don't know if they're going to get it or not. Hey, speaking of Ohio State earlier, if you're a Buckeyes fan and you're going to the stadium, uh, I got a homework assignment for you. Go to the south end, go to section 39A. They got a – Bacon vending machine. It's just, just bacon. Just a regular vending machine. Put in your money. You get bacon. If you're if you if you're there, hit me up with some info. What is this all about? Um, you know, is it hot when it comes out? Is it cool? Do you take it to a concession stand and microwave it? Do you eat it room temperature like beef jerky? How much does it cost? How's it packaged? I'm fascinated by all this. Let me know what's going on. If you're a Buckeye fan, hit me up in the comments on YouTube, and then I'll share your information with our audience here. That's uh, that's the new thing. With all the concession stands all around the state, we've got a bacon vending machine at Ohio State. That's pretty cool. All right, from Ohio State to everybody else, we're going to pick them. We're going to go on the record. we got our pigskin picks. We do it every Friday. That's coming up next right here on Locked On Big Ten. Got to tell you about game time. 
because you might want to go to some games. You might, might go to a Big Ten football game, go to a Major League Baseball playoff game, or heck, even not even games. If you want to go to concerts or theater or comedy shows in your own neighborhood, get the Game Time app. Game Time makes it so easy. It's simple, upfront pricing right away, no guessing games. And they've got a feature where you can see the view from the seat, from the ticket you're about to buy before you buy it, all right there in your hands on, on your phone. It is uh, phenomenal. Check out Game Time today. Uh, they've got the lowest price guarantee. Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference if you find one. Game Time ticket coverage, your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the biz. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets to games or concerts with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Lockdown College for $20, $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On College for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, let's do this. It's time for Pigskin Picks. This closes us out for the week, gets us into the weekend. Don't forget our live broadcast to podcast over after the uh, Michigan Washington game. And uh, let's put it on the uh, the old screen here. If you're audio only, I'll describe it to you as best I can with all the details. There we go. All right, let's start it off with tonight. Friday night, we got Michigan State at Oregon. Oregon, a 23-and-a-half-point favorite. 52-and-a-half is the total. Again, I'm still a little cautious about taking Oregon and covering because they haven't done it most of the year. Um, like Michigan state's going to give some back here with some turnovers. So maybe Oregon does cover. Uh, I would, I would err on the side of caution and say they don't cover. So give me Michigan state and the points, but, but fly past this number. This is going to be a high scoring game, whether Oregon does it on uh, its own or whether Michigan gives them extra Michigan state gives them extra possessions, um, on turnovers fly past the 52 and a half. Take the over on that. UCLA at Penn State on Saturday, 27 and a half points. Um, I I have a feeling that I look, UCLA's broken. Penn State, I have a feeling Penn State comes out a little flat, right? They just had their big nighttime game against Illinois. They come out here at noon. They're just a little they don't have the same energy they had at Illinois against Illinois. UCLA is playing a morning game for all intents and purposes at 9 a.m. their local time. I think the first quarter is a little low scoring, and um, I might be inclined to take the under on this game, and Penn State does not cover the 27 and a half. So give me UCLA and the points and the under on this game. All right? Michigan at Washington. Washington is a two-point, two-and-a-half-point favorite. The total is 41 and a half. I have struggled with this game all all week. I have gone back and forth wondering, is Michigan strong enough with its running game and its defense to go up there and just grind this game? You see the totals low, 41 and a half. Is this like a, a, a 22 to 18 game? If that's the case, I would be in favor of Michigan winning a low scoring close game. Uh, however, I should give Washington look. They got a, they've got a good running game as well. They've got a, they've got the better quarterback in this game, and they're at home. I think Washington wins this game by three. I think I think they do. I think Washington wins and covers. But I like that that number is going to be low. If Washington wins it, I think it gets above the number. So since I said that, uh, let's crawl across the forty-one and a half. USC at Minnesota. USC is an eight and a half point favorite. Minnesota, eight and a half point dog. The number's 50 and a half. I'm going to tell you what. I don't like this line. I don't like it at all. Uh, my antenna are up on this. I told you the fun fact of the week earlier. Both these teams in the last two weeks have lost at Michigan by three points. I think Minnesota can hang with USC, especially at Minnesota. So give me, uh, give me Minnesota to cover. I, Maybe USC wins by a late field goal, but Minnesota hangs with them. And also, I think Minnesota's defense is decent. I don't know if this number gets above the 50 and a half. Maybe it does. Uh, I'm, I'm sitting here deciding on the, the play here is to take Minnesota on the points. 
proceed with your own caution on the uh, over under at 50 and a half. Indiana is at Northwestern. Indiana, 13 and a half point favorite, basically a two touchdown favorite. Indiana is averaging 48 points a game. They're going to do the same. Here. In fact, the number's 41 and a half. Indiana will get almost the 41 and a half by themselves. They're going to get into the high 30s, at least in this one, win by two touchdowns. So uh, give me Indiana to cover and take the over. Absolutely. And Rutgers at Nebraska. I think this line is perfect. I think it's right on the number. I think this is a seven-point game, and I like the total at 41 and a half. Maybe it gets over. Although both teams will want to run the ball a little bit. Milk of the clock. It barely crawls over the over, but I like the Nebraska minus seven. I, I, I'm pretty pretty firm with that. Uh, Purdue at Wisconsin. Purdue is a um, uh, Wisconsin, a 13 and a half point favorite, 45 and a half. Um, yeah, if, if Purdue is as bad as we think, then Wisconsin will win by a couple touchdowns. I think so. Again, they were up by double figures at USC before they lost control of that game. I don't think that they'll, they'll lose control of a lead in this game. Give me Wisconsin to win by a couple touchdowns and take the over at 45 and a half. Purdue can't stop anybody. And Iowa at Ohio State, 19 and a half. I, you know what? Ohio State's winning a the game. They're not winning by three touchdowns, uh, even though this is a little under that. I think Iowa keeps it a little – boy, that number is right there. I was going to say about 18, 17, 17 points. Iowa keeps it within the 17, and um, I think this number does get over the 45-and-a-half. Iowa's put up some points too this year, and I know Ohio State will. So there you have it. Those are our pigskin picks. It's official. We're now on the record. Some of this I decided right on the fly because I've been going back and forth all week on this stuff. It's been uh, amazing. Uh, anyway, have fun with that. Have fun with the games. Check out your point spreads with our friends at FanDuel along the way. Uh, in the meantime, if you want to interact with me over the weekend or anytime, hit me up on Twitter or X at TalkBig10. Don't forget our website. If you're on video, you see the crawl right now, TalkBig10.com. All of our podcasts go there. All the merchandise you want to buy from your favorite school, your favorite football team, jerseys, hats, all that, all right there at TalkBig10.com. And don't forget, we will be going live on our YouTube channel here on Lockdown Big Ten right after that Michigan-Washington game. So looking forward to all that. Uh, you got the Twitter. You got the website. You got YouTube. We're all right here. Looking forward to your comments on all of it. Before you go, if you don't mind subscribing, it's free. Just hit the click, uh, click the subscribe button, and that's it. You're good to go. Subscribe, follow, and share. And tell your friends about us. Share. Share that we're out here. Hey, got a Big Ten podcast every single day. You like the Big Ten. Go ahead and check them out. So subscribe, share, follow, and like Lockdown Big Ten uh, on your favorite podcast app, and you'll get the latest episode of Lockdown Big Ten as soon as it becomes available each and every day. After you're done with another listener or two of us, how about a second listen for our friends at Lockdown College Football? They're out there every day, too. It's a different podcast show. covers all the teams, and it's all part of the uh, Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. You can find that on YouTube as well. Talk to you live on Saturday night. Talk to you again with our next regularly scheduled podcast on Monday morning. It's all right here. Have a great weekend. Enjoy the games. I know I will. For Lockdown Big Ten, I'm Craig Scheman. We'll see you next time.